guys, Angel here. When I tell you I am literally sitting on the edge of my seat, so excited to bring you guys this video. I have been waiting for a year to bring you guys this information. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind you guys that my book, Mornings with God, a 31-day morning prayer and meditation journal is now available. And when you guys get this, take that time, that committed time for 31 days to wake up early and commune with your creator. And also, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Making Money Doing What You Love is available as well. And this comes with a marketing plan, a business plan, and it also comes with the resources with the apps that I use to create my social media posts and all that stuff is in there. Now that we've got housekeeping out of the way, let's get into this video. Okay, so I about three years ago, I was experiencing this issue with every time I had, well not every time, a lot of times, most of the time when I had intercourse with my husband, that afterwards my vagina would start burning and it was like so painful and I couldn't stand it. And so the very first time that this happened, so my husband and I had intercourse and then the next day I started experiencing this burning sensation. So I called my gynecologist, made an appointment, went in, she tested my urine, come to find out that I had a UTI, a urinary tract infection for those of you who don't know. So she gave me my antibiotics, <laughs> Listen, who? So she gave me the antibiotics to clear it up and it worked. So moving forward, I'm having intercourse with my husband again and I feel this, uh, this, this burning sensation. So I contact my, uh, your, my gynecologist and I let her know again. So because this was happening so frequent, what she said was I had what's called the honeymoon syndrome. Now, for those of you who don't know, and I just found out this term about six months ago, the honeymoon syndrome is when a couple goes away on their honeymoon and they have a lot of sex because they're, you know, celebrating their union. And so because of the, the frequency of the intercourse that they start to have during that time, a lot of women will get frequent urinary tract infections. And so that's what we thought that I had. So because of that, my gynecologist wrote me out a prescription for uh, for the antibiotics and she gave me refills for like six more times and these pills were coming with 30 of them at a time. So what she instructed me to do was every time my husband and I had sex is immediately as soon as we were done, obviously you go pee. I hope you women know that to go pee after you have sex. and. Um, she wanted me to take one of these antibiotics every time after I had sex and that was to prevent any kind of infection that was going to happen. So I'm like, at this point, I'm so excited because for those of you who know, a gynecologist typically will not prescribe you antibiotics over the phone. They want you to come in and get tested to test your urine to make sure they're prescribing you the antibiotics for the right reasons. So because we have concluded that I had the honeymoon syndrome, I didn't have to do that. I didn't have to go in and get a urine sample and then get tested and then get my medication. And I was so excited about that because I'm like, I'm a woman, I know my body, I know this is, you know, now I know that this is a urinary tract infection. So I was so grateful to have a gynecologist that didn't make me come in every time I was having um, this, this, this pain in my vagina. So I was so excited about it. Don't get excited about that guys, as inconvenient as it may be. And it was so inconvenient for me too because we moved an hour away from my gynecologist. I mean, not that the drive time is a real big deal. Even if it was 10 minutes down the street, I'm like, I know my body, just call me in an antibiotic so I can get this taken care of. So I wish I would have been willing to be inconvenienced. And um, I kind of wish that my gynecologist would have put her foot down too, but it's all good. I mean, it is what it is, things happen. And so, I'm going on with my life and I'm taking my antibiotic, but it was still happening. So I'm like, what is going on? This isn't the antibiotic isn't working anymore. I'm still feeling this burning sensation. 
So I did go back, finally went back into my uh, gynecologist. She tested my urine during the time when I'm having these same symptoms that I had when I did test positive for the urinary tract infection. So I go in, I'm having the same symptoms, give a urine sample, nothing. It comes back negative. And her and I both are like, we don't know what's going on. So she sends me to a urologist. I go into, first of all, she sends me to a surgeon. And the surgeon, I can't remember the technical term, what they were gonna do, but they were gonna like put a camera inside of my urethra and to look inside my bladder to see if there was anything going on inside of my bladder that could have been causing this burning sensation. So I went to this surgeon and I had like a really bad like experience, like I didn't, it was just, okay. So I went to this surgeon and I'm in her office and she's sitting down and she's talking to me and she gets up to go out of the room for something and when she got up to turn around she literally like walked into the wall that was behind her and it was like so embarrassing it was like you didn't see that wall that big wall that was right there okay so that happened okay cool fine she walked into a wall she says oh my goodness I can't believe I just did that and she tells me that the room that we were in she's not used to seeing patients in that room so when she gets out of her chair and, and goes to turn around in her other office, in her other room, the doorway is there, but in the room that we were in, it was like on the opposite side. So fine, she walked into the wall, but then she came back in and started talking again. Then she goes to leave a second time and she walked into the wall a second time. So I just did not feel comfortable at all knowing that this was the surgeon that was going to uh, put a camera inside my urethra. I don't know. I just didn't feel good about it. And so I left the office and canceled that appointment. Went back to my gynecologist or called my gynecologist again. Let her know what happened. She's like, let me send, let me send you to a urologist. Someone that specializes in bladders. So I go to this urologist. I get tested. You guys, Come to find out, I did not have a honey the honeymoon syndrome. I did not have the UTI freak, as frequently as I thought I was having them, which led me to keep taking these antibiotics. What I have is pelvic floor dysfunction. Never heard of it before in my life. And so after seeing this urologist and he uh, gave me a three day journal, I had to write down everything that I ate, everything, no, not everything that I ate, I had to write down everything that I drank and how often I went to the bathroom in the course of those three days. So it was a very tedious three days of having this journal, making sure I write down the time I drank something, what the content was, and what time I would use the bathroom. So after going back to the urologist with this journal and he's looking at it, he concluded that I had pelvic floor dysfunction. And he explained to me that after having children, some women will suffer with this, you know, from um, having the baby inside of there. And sometimes it doesn't show up for years later. And you, my oldest is 21 and my youngest is 14. So I'm just now starting to experience this. And he also talked about um, how when the penis goes into the vagina, it's, it can possibly do a lot of damage. And when he said that, I'm thinking like back in the day, like when, you know, when you're younger and guys are, you know, they make a comment about them having intercourse with a, a girl and they're like, yeah, I tore that up last night. And I would always be like, y'all ain't tearing nothing up. You know, we push babies out here. Y'all ain't tearing nothing up. The urologist told me that it does. They can tear it up. And I'm like, oh my God, there's some truth to that. There's some merit to that. Like, really guys? So because of the, you know, our anatomy, the way that we are uh, built and created and formed, that the vagina can experience some uh, dysfunction just from the penis, you know, the, the thrusting going in and out. So this is what I have is pelvic floor dysfunction that has similar symptoms to a UTI. So now because I have taken this antibiotic for three years, I have not been able to feel my 
fingertips for about a year now. I, they're numb, they're totally numb, and it's starting to go up to my, and like up my arm. Like I can feel it. Like even when I'm working out, I almost can't feel this arm. And I definitely, I haven't been able to feel these fingertips for, like I said, for about a year. Like they're just numb. They feel like when you're, if your foot goes to sleep and you go to step on it, it's like all those pins and needles and stuff in it. That's what my fingers have felt like. So be, from the antibiotic I now have neuropathy so that's what's causing that so I have to go um, see a neurologist to work on this so I have been in physical therapy my vagina has been in physical therapy so I have been going to a physical therapist and doing some exercises it with you know she's been manually you know going inside my vagina and trying to cure to rebuild these muscles my pelvic floor muscles and to retrain them so what was happening after i had intercourse you know after all the thrusting um and the penetration and then when you have an orgasm all of that involuntary muscle that goes on inside of there when you're experiencing the orgasm my pelvic floor the muscles inside were just like they would stick together they would never relax and so because they were like stuck that is what was causing all of the burning sensation that was making me think that i kept getting these utis and i'm like oh my god like i cannot express to you guys how grateful i am that after three years of experiencing this i finally got some resolve and like i said i've been going to the uh, physical therapy and her name is Christina she has been absolutely freaking amazing she's so nice and she's extremely knowledgeable about what she you know what she's doing what she does and so another culprit to um, you know having this pelvic floor dysfunction if you guys are connected to me on Instagram you know that I love coffee so I have had to take a pause on uh, the type of coffee that I drink and I've had to get this coffee called Kava. Now, the um, this co coffee has reduced acid in it. So, and I also drink uh, green tea, and that green tea that I was drinking has acid in it. So anything acidic, like, and I love a glass of warm lemon water, haven't been able to drink it because the acid in it well, it has an effect inside my bladder and it makes all those, that pelvic floor and those muscles like go crazy and tighten up and not, you know, not relax. So now that I've been going to the physical therapist, I have spent three years feeling like this. And after three weeks of going to, three to four weeks after going to this physical therapy, it's, it's like done. It's done. Like, I cannot express to you how good my vagina feels now like I can't wait to have uh, relations with my husband because I know that I'm not going to experience this pain because I had to change a lot of the foods that I was eating a lot of the things that I was drinking but the main thing that I had to focus on was the coffee because I drink a lot of coffee and so like I said it has a lot of acid in it so getting this kava with the reduced acid in it helped me so freaking much you guys like I have I've had I burning in my feet I've been taking medication because of the neuropathy um, also and then you guys know that when you take antibiotics for a long time you can get a yeast infection so I mean I've had azo and thank the lord and baby jesus and all of them that in these three years of taking the antibiotics i've only had two yeast infections so that has been like baby jesus thank you so much and then also the azo um the the pain relief from the feeling of thinking that i had a uti all this time so guys oh my goodness i could not wait to get you guys this information I hope this has helped you listen if you guys are experiencing this and you feel like you're having like a urinary tract infection after intercourse please go see your doctor and get tested 
and see multiple doctors so they can get to the root of this because a lot like I didn't even know what a honeymoon syndrome was like I didn't know what pelvic floor dysfunction was there was so much that I didn't know and I'm thinking that it's just a urinary tract infection and it wasn't all this time so my husband has clearly been tearing some things up down there <laughs> and plus you know through having uh, carrying two children that can aid to pelvic floor dysfunction as well guys so I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video share this video with someone that you know that has been experiencing um, this uh, these symptoms and I hope this has helped you guys I love you guys from the bottom to the top and I'll see you in the next video